and welcome back. Now today we can have some fun and joy with this little tiny piece of metal down here. But before we do that, there's a couple of little updates if you've been uh, following my channel. Um, first off, the, um, the CAP 1188 touch switch, which is that thing there which I use to control my videos. Oh boy, we've had some fun and games of that, I can tell you. Not the actual coding or the design of this thing in here, but the fact that this uses an Arduino micro type board, which means it presents um, a USB to Windows that changes when it boots up and closes down. What's happened, of course, is that this has been permanently connected to my Windows machine because it is now effectively a self-contained unit and I use it to control my cameras. As you can see, I haven't actually got around to um, changing the front panel yet. Although I did have a very good suggestion from one of the contributors on my channel. Um, he said he's put these washer type things behind this panel, just stuck them on I guess somehow, um, so that behind it would look pretty much as it is now but with um, the washer stuck on, still those solder tags and stuff. So it leaves the front panel entirely clear and you can put your own um, I don't know, printed label or front panel, whatever you want. And this plastic does not prevent um, the capacitive effect going through. So that seems like a brilliant idea and I might well take him up on that and try it out myself. However, because this is permanently connected and running all the time, what's happened, of course, is when I've done a couple of demos, I've forgotten that I had another Arduino connected uh, permanently to my machine. I've chosen the wrong port number and I've overwritten the code in here with something designed for the UNO. In fact, this very project that we're about to see next, this one on my bench. Now you might think, well, all right, so you overwrote it, so what? Just, just overwrite it with the correct code. Well, do you know, it's not, it's not quite that simple. When the um, micro gets overwritten with the wrong code, it sort of bricks itself because it's lost its connectivity, really. I don't quite know exactly what happens, but it certainly bricks itself and you then you then have to oh, you go through hell and high water to get it back again. And it took me a good hour yesterday to manage to get it back. And so I posted a, a question on the Arduino forum, my first question would you believe? And somebody said, well forget all the Arduino bit, just go to your device manager. So if we quickly zoom in on the screen, actually, just have a look at the uh, device manager here. Now, you know, I normally don't do this because I don't like the quality, but I've got too many things connected. Now, as you can see uh, on the screen, it's this device here, COM6, and you will notice from that little splodge there, I've disabled this now. The suggestion was disable this. You don't need it. You're not right into it. The human interface device or keyboard emulation that the actual Arduino down there presents to Windows, still works. So by disabling that serial port means I won't accidentally connect to it using the IDE and write the code over with, with some other code that then bricks the device again. So that was a brilliant suggestion, I've done that. And as you can see, it's disabled now. And uh, well, all things good. Now what else has happened then in the, the world of Arduino since uh, I last spoke? Um, well, we've had a few deliveries uh, let me have a look at uh, this one here, for example. Let me just do the camera up, it's a bit moving about. So this one here, um, I haven't actually unpacked it because it's got a warning about sensors, static uh, electricity, um, which I'm surprised about. But as you can see, there we are, there's a big word. This is um, a Mega clone. I've never used a Mega because it's so ginormous. I mean, look at the size of it. I'm, I'm using little tiny boards like these ones down here. And this is a mega, but it has got a huge number of uh, pins and ports. And as it was fairly cheap, I think I got it from Banggood or Gearbest or somewhere. I thought, well, about time I invested in one. So here it is. That'll be a future project. I've also got um, this thing here, which as you can probably recognise as an RFID dongle. And a card, that white thing, that's the card. And that's the actual um, receiving board. So that's for a future project when I can think of something to do with it. What else have I got? Oh, I've got a stepper motor here and uh, a couple of modules to connect the stepper motor into and be able to control them. Now the reason I got this, because originally I, I started a project for my own personal use with a servo. But servos, I don't know, A, they're not particularly strong and secondly, they're a little bit finicky sometimes. 
So I thought what I really need is a stepper motor. Let's go and get one, make a video of it as well, and compare it to the servo perhaps. So that's for a future project. And that leads us on to what this is all about. Now, I did actually show this device in a previous video and put the question out there, do you know what it is? And at least one respondent came back and says, yes, I know what this is. Uh, apart from being an aluminium bar with a few holes in it and four wires coming out, what exactly is it? Well, it's called a load cell. And what it does, it measures weight. And your bathroom scales have probably got one of these inside them. And they're extremely easy to use and very sensitive. Now, I got the most sensitive one I could find. This one is, uh, okay, it's upside down, but it says 500 grams. Now, you can get them up to, I don't know, 50 kilograms uh, if you want. So you can measure an awful lot of things or weigh a lot of things. But I just wanted 500 grams just to play about with. It also needs this board here, which is well, effectively an industry standard now. It's an HX711 uh, board, and this does all the measuring of the tiny, tiny voltages coming out of this. You go, well, what is this exactly? Well, it is pretty much the way it looks. It's an aluminium bar with a few holes drilled in it. I don't know if it's important that these holes are a certain distance or size or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, the point is, this bar flexes. If I put weight on here, it flexes just enough so that the components under this bit of splodge here and this bit of splodge here flex. Now what's under here, in fact, actually is um, a Wheatstone Bridge resistor network, uh, which is only, uh, I don't know, four resistors maybe, maybe six. I'll put up a picture. And so when pressure gets put down on here, one set of resistors gets stretched microscopically and another one gets compressed. And that's enough to generate a difference in potential across those resistors, which means down this wire, the signal can be measured. And this HX711 device can present enough of a signal for your Arduino to play about with. Now, obviously this is all in bits and I started to make a project, but I had to put it all back together and just to show you. So let's have a look um, exactly what this does and how simple it is to make a measurement. Right, there we are. So now we're ready to uh, play about. I can put stuff on here and see what happens. Now, after booting up then, now this bit of code I've taken from one of the examples is the SparkFun board, but I've made a few changes to it. So um, when I get this all sorted out for a demo, I'll post it at the bottom of this video. Um, and basically what the Arduino is saying is read a value from here so that when we start up it's it's calibrated to zero, which it is now. As as per the, uh, the window here it says, I think there's zero on that bar. And there is. So I have here, as you can see, these little tiny um, weights. Let's bring them a bit closer. Which um, I bought specifically because I knew it was going to be working with a low bar. These are little tiny, uh, whoops, weights. Now this one's a 20 gram, so let's see what happens when I put this on. And it says 20 grams. Now you might think, well, why did, why did it change? Well, because my weight dropping on that bar obviously creates a bigger weight, so 25, then it settles at 20. Now that's pretty accurate. Now my code, I said I've changed this code here. And what I've done actually is to say anything over 5 grams will, will stick quite happily to complete grams, anything below five grams, and we'll have point tenths of a gram as well. So if I take the 20 off and put this one on, which is a 10 gram. I mean, this is magic, isn't it? Don't you think this is absolutely fantastic? The fact that this little bar is actually being stretched enough by that weight for this resistor network in here to be affected in any way, shape or form. And for this amplifier then to detect that, it's just, well, to me, it's mind boggling. Now this one here is a five gram. I don't know now, is it gonna detect five grams? 4.9 it says. Maybe it's because I've got it at the end, I don't know. That's pretty good, 4.9. And what else have I got? I got a two gram. 
it thinks it's 1.9. Well, that's, that's accurate enough for what I want. And finally, this little incy bincy little thing here, you can't even see it, it's so small. That is actually a one gram weight. And I'm going to put that on and we'll see what comes up. It says 0.9. Now, if you were measuring letters with this, that is actually accurate enough. I mean, nothing requires this point nth of a gram um, accuracy when it comes to letter posting. So now my question is, what do I do with this? What sort of project can I make with it? I don't want to measure letters or weigh letters. I'm not eBaying stuff out. Um, obviously it's super sensitive. I mean, just touching it and letting it go. So I've come up with an idea that is going to be useful to me going forward. And when you hear what it is, you'll probably think it quite amusing, really. The ridiculous projects that I can come up with. Okay, here's the thing. First of all, let's go back to the workbench. There we are. Now, when I'm at work, looking at a workbench, not dissimilar to this, except it has a keyboard on it, not lots of electronic components. I also have this on it, which is a coffee mug. So let me just come back out a little bit. So there's my coffee mug. Insulated, aluminium, it's quite small, so I don't drink a lot in one go. There's my coffee mug. And as you might expect, I fill it with coffee every now and again. And as you can see there, you can only see a certain distance down into that coffee mug. Now we're looking from the top here with this camera angle. This is actually up on a shelf, so it's a bit more like that. And what happens is, I drink a certain amount of coffee, forget I have any coffee in there whatsoever, it goes cold, and I think, oh, I'll go and get myself a cup of coffee, lift it up, and of course there's still half a cup of cold coffee in there. No big deal, but it's quite annoying. So what I thought I would do was get a couple of coasters, which I've already bought, and I might a couple of clear coasters. This one's still got its protective coating on. This is what it looks like with that coating off. You can get these in all different colours. They're about 150 each. I've got them off eBay. I'll put a picture up. So I thought, right, if I can build this on top of here and then put this one, also clear, so we can see the electronics, over the top, so in fact it'd be like that. So imagine that's built up. That's going to be placed on here. This one will go over the top. My mug can go on top of that. We'll press a little button on here somewhere that says zero. That will tell me whether my coffee cup's empty or not. And if it's not, it will flash a little LED to say, oi, drink your coffee before it goes cold. I know, sounds ridiculous, but I just couldn't think of anything else to, to do, quite honestly, with a load cell. And uh, well, it could well be a, a practical solution for me for getting, for getting drinking my coffee. So that's what I'm going to do. Now I started to do it, then I had to dismantle it all again because I wanted to show you first on here. Um, and you'll see the results of this in just a few seconds because I'll do all this and then just join the videos together. That's the idea. That's what I'm going to do. I don't see why it shouldn't work, frankly. Um, now, just going back to the, uh, the code window for a sec. Um, this reading now, as you can see, it now says 0.2. I have noticed that when you first switch this on, the reading does drift a little bit. So I've got this bit of code that I've changed inside this, this, this piece here that I uh, borrowed from the internet. And when I connect these two together, I say go and do the zeroing. So if I connect these together, they are. Now it resets the zero and we're back to zero again. So I think I'll probably keep that in somewhere, um, on, on here somewhere, so I'll have some kind of button or something, I don't know, just so I can say zero it with an empty coffee cup on there, just to make sure that that is what I'm looking at. But would you believe, even if this is inaccurate to, you know, 0.1 of a gram or even, even one gram, it makes no difference because the smallest amount of coffee in here, even a centimetre's worth of coffee in here, it's something like 20 or 30 grams. It's ridiculously heavy. Well, it's liquid, isn't it, I suppose? One kilogram is a litre. So it's heavy stuff. So if I've got that much coffee left in here, this is going to know about it. No ifs, buts, or maybes. It will say, oi, get on and drink that coffee. So that's the idea. That's the project. We'll come back in a few days. Well, for you in a few seconds and see how I got on. Right, I think that just about wraps up the intro. 
And uh, don't forget all this other stuff up here. That's all for future projects. All interesting stuff. I just wish I had more time to do it all. So there we are. See you in just a bit and see how it works out. And it's time for a very quick update. Unfortunately, I haven't got the project completely finished because, would you believe it, I've been stymied by the lack of a couple of bolts. But let's uh, talk through what's happened so far. So as you can see, I've got the, um, the load cell actually mounted now onto this acrylic plate with a couple of uh, bolts underneath and a couple of washers just to raise the uh, entire bit off the plate. So if the camera can just about see in there, look, there's a tiny little gap. That's more than enough what we need. And of course, you've got the resistors underneath here as well, as well as on top to give that Wheatstone bridge. So that's nicely secured. This is the uh, HX711 board, which is also secured. Um, I think these, these connections here are in fact a little bit clunky, but well, and uh, this is the Arduino Nano. Now this is the thing that's actually causing me grief when it comes to mounting. One, um, I don't like the way I've uh, mounted these pins, but even allowing for that, these little tiny holes, I don't know how close I can get, but see these little tiny mounting holes here, one there, one over the other side, there's one on each corner. I assume they were like two millimeter or M2 bolts. Nope. They are 1.6, M1.6. Do you think I hold any stock of M1.6? <laughs> no, of course I don't. Who has anything that tiny? So I thought, well, I might be able to ream these out or do something else, but frankly, I think, you know, I just, I just want to get this done now. So I've uh, stuffed in a very quick order to eBay, and hopefully it's being processed even as we speak to get some M1.6 to mount this. I've also got to sort out um, a reset switch on here somewhere because I'm going to need that probably every time I use it. And of course an LED. LED is no problem. I'll just wire that up to a couple of these pins here with the little resistors that will probably come out of this edge. So what that means is this will be orientated probably like that when it's on the, on the shelf so that the USB cable can come in the back. And then the LED can come out here and probably just, just show enough. This acrylic has an amazing property, of course, of being able to display um, LED colours through its entirety. So I'll, I'll experiment a little bit with that. But that's as far as I got. I think um, I'm going to talk through this in much more detail in part two of this video. Um, I don't really like doing part two. It's a sort of a bit of a cop-out, aren't they? But this has already gone on long enough and I wanted to show you something. So the part two of this might be quite short and we'll look at some really simple code in how we can get all this working just up front and then the full final code uh, I'll post as well. Okay, that's all I've got time for now. See you in the next video with a proper update and thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos interesting and useful. You can leave comments down below and also click that little button that says subscribe. Okay, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.